In this podcast, we discussed about how you can grow your personal brand on LinkedIn from scratch. What sort of content you should create and many such interesting topics around LinkedIn. She has helped more than 500 plus entrepreneurs during pandemic. Personal branding and business coach with more than 28k followers on LinkedIn. The one and only Shanli Subramanyam straight from Malaysia on your behalf. So sit back, relax, close all the tabs and enjoy this value pack episode. All right, folks, I have someone with me who has trained more than 500 entrepreneurs during the pandemic personal branding and business coach with 28k followers on LinkedIn, the one and only Shanli Subramanyam. Thank you so much for being here. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for the introduction, Vedan, and the amazing introduction, I would say. And I'm truly honored to be here, uh, to be on your podcast. Yes. Thank you so much for sparing time for this because I have, I was waiting for this for so long. Yeah, I've been watching your YouTube videos, uh, all your other interviews. You've been doing some great work <clears throat> over there. So kudos to you. Thank you so much. And yes, uh, before we get into the Q&A thing, I want to know about your journey from being an engineer. Because by the way, I, I'm also a mechanical engineer. So <laughs> I want to know. I'm very excited for the, knowing that journey, <laughs> that how it transformed. <laughs> So how I transformed from uh, an engineer to an entrepreneur, or I would say not an entrepreneur, but a marketer, now that I call myself a marketer. And I would say it is it's, it is an accidental thing that happened to me. So I'm more like an ex- accidental entrepreneur or marketer, if I would like to say. Uh, because, you know, the thing is that I've always uh, keen on starting my own business. And I've always had a side hustle when I was in full-time job. I, I, I did a lot of things in beauty, in food, uh, e-commerce. So I just had something going on all the time. So since I had that, I, I had to learn how to do marketing. So I will mm-hmm. go for branding, marketing courses. I will learn about digital marketing and all that. So there was this one time that I went to a three-month digital marketing program. And that really opened up my, you know, my eyes and my horizon about digital marketing. And it really brought, you know, thinking that there's so many people could be struggling similarly like me, especially when it comes to solopreneurs. Uh, you know, because, you know, many people are out of passion. They're starting their business. You know, it's really nice to see that. But when it comes to marketing, they're still struggling. And marketing mm. for solopreneurs are very much different from a big brand. And it's so much right. easier as well uh, if True. they know what are the right strategies, strategies to use. And as I see myself as an introvert as well, there are many introverts who also start something out of their passion want to do business. But they give up the fact that they couldn't start selling uh, their product or their services. And that's when my mission starts to come in because... When I had my side hustle and when I started implementing my strategies and all that, it worked for me. And then I thought, you know, they, they uh, when I speak to the other solopreneurs and entrepreneurs, they have been facing problems in terms of like marketing themselves. How can I put mm-hmm. my product myself out there? So mm-hmm. that's when I see there's a gap in the market uh, where generally people uh, think that marketing is very difficult. They think in the bigger scale. They think like a big company. How do big companies mm. brand? You True. need to go Google Ads. You need to do mm. SEO, SEM and all that. But they are simpler way for smaller businesses, solopreneurs to start branding themselves. And that's when I start having a, a mission in myself to educate people about simpler way to do marketing for themselves. And that's when mm. I narrowed down myself as a personal branding coach. I mean, having three years of experience in marketing is close to nothing. I mean, there are people with almost 20, 30 years of marketing. So I cannot put mm. myself among them. So how can I still be an authority and go-to person in marketing? Is by niching down. Mm-hmm. And knowing that, that's when I niche down 
but there were also problems with that because in general as an asian we are not taught to voice out we're not taught to share especially women right you mm. you can't be going out there talking about um, your achievements successes because people think that you're bragging about yourself but that's where i want to come in and build the courage not only for women generally for everyone who wants to build the courage not only to be seen but to be heard because many people have interesting stories personalities and also the things that they do in a daily basis that could inspire others so how you can be seen and also heard at the same time and that's where my mission come in i want to help people to courageously and confidently to come out there and voice out their stories their messages and uh, their personalities to the world within their community and that's where it all started uh, like uh, three years ago wherein so it's an interesting journey i never thought that i'll be here but it's it is an accidental thing that happened to me and i'm truly grateful for that what i'm doing now uh because i see that the more and more need for person learning when i started three years ago there was a need but not as much as now since but, covid happened things changed there's so many things changed in the last three years yeah and the need for personal branding has become more now so the demand mm. is higher it's definitely higher than previously and people start seeing the need for it and yeah. that's why i feel that you know i have chosen the right niche that i'm in the right industry that no matter when even you know the time passed by the need for branding yourself in business now uh, as a human will never go away will never fade away because it is a need now uh, that will be ongoing i think for many years down the road mm-hmm. yes yes like uh, people do business with people that's why your personal brand is equally important as your professional brand like your company's brand yeah people True. have start to aware um the need yes. that i'm um, people has changed the consumer the consumer's way of purchasing uh, purchasing has changed Her, sorry consumer's way of purchasing decision has changed how they That... desire is different from when they did de- uh, when they desired 10 20 years ago maybe last uh, 10 20 years ago you watch an ad it's a one way of communication they watch an ad and then they like it they might go down and buy but now we have two way of communication they like something they comment then we respond mm. and there is a two way communication happening in the marketing nowadays so i think it could change in the future maybe there's a three way or four ways of marketing mm. but yes i think you know consumers will want to continuously see how the brand is transparent how the brand is showing up for the people yeah indeed yes because uh, you have come a long way i have seen your growth i have been following you when you had uh, less than 5000 followers and uh, i know that you have been experimenting with different kinds of content in your personal branding journey so i wanted to know five t- tips for someone who wants to build a personal brand on linkedin okay that's a really good question because I think when it comes to tips of building personal brand, I mean, you can Google it. You will find, you know, various way on how you can get started. Got There's step by step ways on how you can do that. But as a beginner, if you think that you know you haven't get started, or something is stopping you from getting started, I've always taught uh, people about this four D step. It's a four step on how you start building a personal brand. So the yeah. thing is that. if you are someone who you know have been posting content you, you somehow have an idea on you know what you need to do hmm. but for someone who have no idea at all what am i going to do what is even personal branding how am i going to get started right then this 4d concept um, you know will be helpful so first of all the first d is to design so when you decide to be to go out there and put yourself out there you want to first decide first what do you want to be known for so mm. what do you want to be known for is definitely should go towards what you're passionate about right what is your expertise uh, what are your expertise where you can talk for hours about a certain topics because if you do not if you're not passionate about the 
particular topic, then it's very difficult for you to even talk about it to other people. And people can't see the passion in you as well mm. when you're talking about it. So it's important for people to see the passion in you. So once you decide, secondly, is definitely you need to dedicate someone, some, you know, not some, a lot of time to learn about the particular topic. The thing is, you could be interested with something, you might not be entirely good at it. Even if you think that you're an expert in something, you know to a certain level, you have experience, but things are always changing. You are always learning. So you definitely need to dedicate as much time as possible to learn about the particular topic or niche because you want to be more advanced than the people uh, than the yeah. other people. So you have to learn as much as possible so you are ahead of everyone because that's when you can educate others about that particular topic. So you want to dedicate as much as, as much time possible to learn, listen to podcasts, watch YouTube videos, read books, because that's when you're going to be ahead of everyone. Right? Mm. So then once you dedicate, that's when you will start delivering. That's when you want to put your content out there. That's when you want to share whatever that you have learned with the others um, within the similar industry. The thing with people is that the thing that when you when you decide to choose a particular topic means that you are within a particular niche, within a particular industry. You're not trying to educate everyone. And that needs to be very clear. People who are mm. going to follow you is not everyone, but the one who's truly interested in what you do or need in need of the product or services that you're trying to offer. So when you're trying to deliver your content, that's when you use LinkedIn or any other channels that you think particularly where your audience could be hanging out. Mm. And when it comes to delivering the content, could be challenging for some people because a lot for a lot of people, they have this um this mindset that I cannot write, and mm. for we we always say yes. that we have a content block. I am then they have the assumption that I'm not a writer, so mm. how can I even write? But there's two things that I always mention. One is that we don't have a speaker's block. When we talk, we, do, we, we don't block ourselves. Somehow we can speak. And if we speak like what we write, sorry, if we write like what we speak, then there wouldn't be so much of challenge. Because people try to write not like how they speak. They try to imitate someone else. They try to copy someone else. That's where the problem comes in. Right? Mm. Secondly is that you write about what you know. If you mm. go out there and trying to do, try to write about things that you don't know, that's when you struggle. But mm. when you write about, if I ask you, Saku, um, can you write about what you, uh, I mean, what you did yesterday? You can write about it. If I ask right. you, can you write about what I did yesterday? You mm. have no idea, right? So you, so you write about what you know. So that, that means that what's happening in your life, in your business, in your career, what you are learning, and all that. So it's so much simpler for you to, you know, to write. So. These are the two um, very important tips that I will share with anyone when it comes mm. to delivering your content. And finally, final D is to differentiate yourself. Now we yeah. see more and more people have been, you know, becoming a content writer. They've been trying to put content out there. So they need to be differenti differentiation between you and the others um, in the similar niche. So when you differentiate yourself means is that how you want to go extra mile in terms of uh, providing values for people. So people definitely appreciate others who, you know, deliver free content, trying to help them uh, with a lot of care and kindness. But at the same time, how you want to make it in a way that they will want to stick around with you. And believe me is that we cannot make everyone like our content everyone mm. to follow what we do right because True. our personality matters what we do our our similarities between you between the audience and me will also dictate if they will like me or not uh, True. so are, are we similar in some ways uh within your stories your culture things that you do and all that so people are not uh, entirely going to follow you for everything but the right people as you know will want to stick around so that you definitely need to look into the way to differentiate yourself and also to understand that not everyone is going to uh, follow you and like you for what you do. So you need to figure out mm. which group of people 
are likely to like what I do. Which group of people could be the, the age of group, could be the location, could be the gender, because even male might not like me, only female might be following, right? So even particular gender or geographically True. what, um, people in a certain uh, niche or topic. So knowing that at least you can differentiate yourself only in that particular uh, group of people. So mm. these are the four Ds. First of all, design and then dedicate, dedicate. deliver and finally and differentiate yourself different. when you're putting, out, uh, putting yourself out there. So those are my tips when you want to start building your personal brand online. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Absolutely correct. Like, you should have niche first. You have to serve certain kind of target audience. Because uh, once uh, we, uh, I remember the one mistake which I was making back in my early days is I was trying to be generalized man. Like, I wanted to serve everyone who is looking uh, to my content. That's why I started even posting memes for some time. And it, and it yeah. worked out. But it wasn't attracting me, my target audience, you know, ultimately uh, one more mistake, which I see many people are doing is once their content starts uh, getting some numbers, they think that their, their whole personal brand is going in the right direction. But sometimes it's not the case because you are attracting wrong target audience. If, yeah, because if you are a content writer, let's say you are a content writer and you are attracting uh, people from XYZ industries who don't have to do anything with your content writing services. Ultimately, so it, it's all for nothing. You just have a number to show people. Yeah, so Correct. this is also one thing that uh, we have to take care of. Correct. Amazing. Quality, quality views over quantity, right? So yes. who, who are the quality audience that we have? Uh, mm. that truly find our our topic interesting. You know, there could be someone who are not interested to work with us, but when they keep us on top of their mind, they could be exactly. someone who recommend us to someone else. So yeah. I always say that your personal branding helps you to reach three R's. So three R's are people are going to remember you, people are going to recognize you, people are going to recommend you. So when mm. you consist consistently show up, people are going to remember you. And when they see you anywhere, they're going to recognize you as well. And finally, even if they don't need you, they will recommend they will you to recommend. someone else because they find that she's good at what she does. I've been following for some time. Maybe you can give a try. People will always, yes. always recommend. So that's True. three R's that I always mention as well. Yeah. Okay. So we covered about personal branding, how to build a personal brand with four D's and three R's. So now, now I wanted to touch about your business coaching journey. <laughs> Uh, I wanted to know because you have dealt with many entrepreneurs out there. So uh, what are the three digital marketing mistakes that these entrepreneurs are doing which uh, are hindering their growth? Okay, so when you actually mentioned this question, the first thing that came to my mind is the fact that people are trying to sell to everyone. That's the biggest mistake. Uh, that when face to face or the co in the coaching industry or in the any product based industry, when I coach about digital marketing and all that, when I ask them who are your target audience, they will say everyone. They're trying to sell to everyone, and that's I would say is the biggest mistake that any business person can make because you can you can't potentially uh, sell to everyone. Your product, it have a specific features, has a specific solution to a problem that your audience is facing. And if you think that your product can solve the problem of everyone, and that's where your product is failing. Mm. Your product should solve one problem. Yeah. What is that one problem? You really need to figure out what is the problem that you are trying to solve? And what is the solution that you are providing? And who is that one target audience that need your product. So one problem, one solution, solution and one and target, target audience. audience. And when you know that, that's when, secondly, you can increase your price. A lot of uh, people think that the cheaper they are, the better it is. Hmm. But that's not the case. The cheaper you are, the more cheaper people want it to buy from you. Or if right. you're not the cheaper, they will go for 
people who are cheaper than you. So you want to find people who are willing to pay for the quality of work that you provide. So you need to have full confidence. That's number three. If you do not have the full confidence in what you offer, then you cannot increase the price of your product. So they're increasing the price. So when you know exactly who your target audience and you have the confidence that your product and services is going to help them 100% to solve their problem, you can, in, you can confidently say that, yes, I will help you. Definitely my product or service is going to help you. And this is my service. Uh, this is, these are the price for my services. And confidently you can raise your price. And I think that is where you can generate better quality clients for yourself, more time for your business, and at the same time, make more money for yourself and the business at the same time. Mm, indeed, yes. Actually, uh, one thing we can relate to is uh, personal branding of entrepreneurs. You know, because that is so important. I have seen many people who are growing their business like crazy just by their personal brand be it product, be it service, be it SaaS, anything, you know? So yeah, great point for that. And uh, we talked about uh, personal branding. We talked about business coaching uh, of entrepreneurs. Uh, now I wanted to discuss about uh, content creation to be specific because I have seen, I, I will be very honest. I love your content. The way you add human touch in your content, it's, it's brilliant. Uh, you post about your daily life, you post uh, in your or pictures of your workspace, you post about your daughter, you post videos. So uh, tell me how you decide that which content should be live and how you decide your content calendar. Okay, so before I go to that, right, I still want to touch specifically on, uh, on personal branding. So as yeah. a personal branding coach, I haven't yet to touch what is personal branding for me? Personally, what is personal branding for me, right? So when it comes to personal branding, for me particularly, that is very much relevant to, relevant to the content that I'm creating. That's why I want to mention what is the meaning of personal branding to me before I go to the content creation itself. So when, when I, if I ask you, right, um, who are your favorite superheroes? Okay, there are many superheroes. There are Spider-Man, Batman, Iron Man, Hulk. Who are your, who is your favorite superhero, uh, Raiden? Iron Man. Iron Man. So, me too. Iron Man. High five. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, but if we ask someone else, uh, you know, they might, you know, they might, their favorite might be Batman. Perhaps my mm. husband, his favorite is Batman. So, some people okay. might like Hulk. So, people have different tastes and different personality. And if you see the superheroes, each and every superhero is different, right? They have their own uh, way of, way of fighting the way of the, the own way of personality the image and all that and that puts them different and that makes different people to like the different type of superheroes so when it comes to personal brand i think what we want to do is become the superhero within our particular niche and mm. when you when we become the superhero within our particular niche uh that's when we become a go-to person people will like us for the particular personality image that we have instead of just the value that we are giving so for me person brand connected very much to personal uh, personal connection how a person can personally get connected with me and when someone is personally connected with me is that they find a lot of similarities uh, in me and them and they get familiar with who i am in a day-to-day -day basis so similarities mm. and also familiarities. So that personal connection itself become uh, make them want to come back and look for me. So when you say personal brand is that, okay, eventually what I want to achieve is that people search for me. They just don't see me as part of, okay, they scroll, okay, I see Charlene's content, but they, will, they have to think about me. I haven't seen Charlene's content. Let me go and look for her on LinkedIn today. Or let me go and search for her. What's her latest YouTube video, right? So I want them to think about me and go and search for me instead of me just appearing on their, um, on their, on their feed. So more like someone who truly want to stick around with what I do, truly believe that what I provide to them is valuable. So that's where most of my clients as well 
are my uh, are my podcast listeners are my youtube uh, are my youtube uh, uh, you know video they are always watching all my youtube videos so the difference is that people who watch your youtube or listen to your podcast are different people who are different than people who just read your linkedin content so it's mm. a short form content and there is a long form content and that's where my content strategy comes uh, this is where my content strategy comes in this comes again because my long form content serves to people who wants to stick around with me people who want to search for me people who think that i can give them more value but the uh, short form content is just as a brand awareness for people to get to know me a little bit more but if they like me they you know truly want to follow me that's when they follow my long form content and that's when i yeah. always have as part of my content strategy i always have a long form content i used to have a linkedin live uh, which uh, then i had a long form article linkedin article but this year on uh, then i moved to podcasting okay so now i'm doing podcasting and also youtube uh together so my long form content in a weekly basis is a youtube video which is also okay. a podcast and then that's when i turn that into a uh, a uh, video short form videos i turn them to short form videos and that is the second way of me branding myself because i think videos play a bigger role when it comes to branding and also Indeed. live and also live so for me i think live definitely will help you to stand out um compared to the other forms of content because how many people even do go lives on linkedin mm, like not many people very few very, very few. few people do lives on linkedin that is also part of a good strategy if you want to and then that's where the bite size of content comes in i always include at least one stories in my long form content so what is the theme for the week so it could be okay social media strategy or it could be you know what are the challenges of coaches something like that so the theme then maybe in my story i might i might talk about what challenges i have faced before then how i overcome it and what are the five tips uh, that coaches can start implementing so all that eventually you can take up and then put into a bite form con- bite size mm. content right and you know it could be two or three so i have between four, i do between four to five contents in a weekly basis but sometimes you know i i, I do think that if, if one of my content perform really well then the next day i will not post anything i will just wait for the content to really take up okay. the you know reach the algorithm uh to the maximum and then i'll post the next content because i have always noticed that if one content perform well and then i post the next content the that content will lose its algorithm reach mm-hmm. so i will wait for the content to at least i know that the likes have reduced the comments have reduced and then the next day i'll post another one so that's one thing that i will see as well if the reach is pretty high then i'll wait for the next day to pause first and keep commenting and and and, and you know and uh, engaging so the post still shows up on the people's feed so in terms of my content strategy yes long form short form and how do i cut that into videos and also a small uh, a bite size uh, content and that's what i even uh, encourage my clients to do as well because that um, but a lot of people i understand that do not have the uh, leverage or advantage to create the long form content and also short yeah. form content right True. so that's that's also that's when i came up with my content calendar so i have 365 day content calendar where i include many things that i personally have included in my content which i put in in the calendar that produce a lot of engagement interest from people including educational and also uh and also live stories that you can include in your content which you know um I'm giving as well a uh, a one month free, and then there's a paid version, which is a three sixty five days uh, for people. So I truly understand people could struggle when it comes to content. Indeed. So yes. these uh, ideas could be helpful for you when you when you are just starting. Okay. Yeah. Great. So we talked about a lot of things, right, from personal branding to uh, content calendar. so uh, to conclude this uh, podcast uh, i wanted to know about your personal branding agency so tell us more about it and how you guys work and what are your client base and everything so particularly my branding agency is focusing towards uh, executive and also entrepreneurs so the most of the people currently we are working into is entrepreneurs okay people who 
I started their business, they're growing their business, this who they're working. But we are, where we are expanding now is to focus towards the executive. Because now I have seen the need for companies to start uh, leveraging on the personal brand of the employees. So that is where we are actually mm. working towards how we can tap into the companies and also how uh, you know the, the companies can see the benefit when they start leveraging the personal brand of their employees because that is where the biggest scale is. See, when it comes to entrepreneurs uh, focusing on the founders or solopreneurs or freelancers, it's a smaller scale. But when yeah. you focus towards the companies where, you know, because companies have, have a bigger marketing budget and they're also looking to uh, a larger uh, target audience and reach and all of that. And True. currently, that is where we, we are going to work towards so previously, I have focused mostly towards entrepreneurs, but uh, now we have been, uh, you know, planning, uh, sketching a marketing plans uh, to work towards more on the marketing for the companies, but hmm. focusing on personal branding. Only personal branding. But focusing on personal branding because I think there's the gap there because a lot of companies yeah. they focus towards uh, branding for the company itself, but when it comes to personal brand. It's a little bit different, right? You're going to focus on the employee's personal branding and also maybe the founder's or CEO's personal brand, which is very much different from the company brand that maybe they are already have some agencies who are already doing it. So, you know, they, they will want to leverage uh, on the brand, personal brand of the individuals of the companies. That's hmm. where I want to come in. Yeah, interesting, interesting market. Like it's almost a blue ocean, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they are, they, I mean... Based on my research, what I've seen is that, I mean, uh, in terms of uh, in, over in, in other regions like US and Australia, it's pretty uh, growing, pretty popular over there. But in this region where in Southeast Asia, uh, even in Asia, there are not many people who are doing it. Correct. So that is where I know my research came in that not many multi-agency are focusing on that. So if I niche down a bit, maybe the the reach is not wide, but more and more people will start understanding the need for it. Yeah, sooner or later, yes. Definitely yeah. it will come into picture, like in yeah. masses. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, uh, as an end note, do you want to say anything to my viewers? <laughs> to your viewers, I would definitely say that. So make sure to subscribe to your YouTube channel. <laughs> make sure that you are there following all the all your interviews. Uh, so that you know, pretty much people are going to learn a lot, uh, from this Indeed. interview session because you learn from people's experience. You can't entirely experience something. Correct. We always learn from others, and that's why yes. we read books. We know that we learn so much from just reading books. And similarly, our podcasts, uh, YouTube channel, interview sessions, and all that. It somehow is going to, you know, open eyes in some matters that you find that, you know, have been keeping your post for some time. So all these interviews are, you know, it's going to be useful. They can, for me, it's podcasting and, and, and videos are very much uh, infused into my daily activities. So when I'm, when I'm going for workout or when I'm uh, cooking or what, I'm always listening to something mm. at the back. So make that as part of habit, uh, you know, as part of your habit uh, to be part of your lifestyle. Listening because you are learning, right? You're going to continuously learn. So having these free valuable things that, you know, that's available freely for everyone now, it's something that is not uh, something that is reachable for everyone. And we have the privilege to do it now. And I think we have to take advantage of that. Yeah. Thank you so much. And by the way, guys, Shalini has a YouTube channel. <laughs> so I will link down all the social media handles that she has, plus her YouTube channel's link in the description. So please go check it out, follow her, subscribe to her channel. She posts amazing content around LinkedIn and around personal branding. So you better don't miss it. So Shalini, thank you so much for making this possible. Once again, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much, Vedan. Truly honored and I enjoy our sessions.